Hey everybody, welcome to another game of War Machine. I'm Line em Up. I've got a game here between my buddies Legion of Everblight and my Signar. I had a request for Striker 2, so I went ahead and I uh, broke out Striker 2 last week. And I gotta say, I really loved him. Um, you're gonna see in this video, it's a little long, it's because there's actually two videos in it. If you want, you can go ahead and skip ahead, and in, in the doobly doo, I'll have what time code you can go to to actually get to the second battle report. The uh, first battle report went really quick. You'll see that it was a very fast game. Um, this list that I'm running, I'm thinking about changing it a little bit. I'm not sure about having the Centurion on the Archduke. He does a good amount of damage, but being susceptible to things like knockdown can really hurt. Um, but so onto this game. Uh, you see that I've got my Stormblades there moving up, and I'm trying to keep them out of the range of the Death Stalkers because they can just wipe out my blades regardless of their armor. Um, that's why I have that little 5 inch widget there so I don't walk my guys past uh, into threat range of the stalkers. And then I just basically ran everything up, I put up deflection, not that it would matter that much. And then uh, on to my buddy's turn. Uh, my buddy's playing Abby 2 and he's doing a list with Proteus which is awesome, I love Proteus' new model. Um, I think that's the new version. But either way Proteus is a pretty cool model so to see him on the, on the board is really cool. I like character beasts. Um, and then he's got like one of five, he's got five beasts and none of them are duplicates, which is really cool. I think that's something about Mark III that has, can't be understated. It is definitely giving some variety to lists, instead of just playing against three Ravagors and two Angels or whatever. Here you see Ravagor shooting out, and he uh, he's shooting out a three inch AoE because we don't have any four inch AoEs uh, in the bag, and my buddy wanted me to make sure I let everybody know he knows it's supposed to be a four inch AoE. So we played it just a little bit outside the three inches, not to walk. Other than that, his guys are running up and they're staying outside of 17 inches of striker and well outside of 17 inches of striker so that he can't just run up charge and kill something. Um, and then we're going to go on to my turn. So a really quick turn, not, you know, nothing unusual, it's turn one. You see the proxy base going down there, it's uh, going to be where I'm going to put my uh, lancer so I can measure, uh, I measured out where I can get the rebuke off onto the Scythian and a Lightning Storm into the Forsaken to kill the Forsaken and a Deathstalker. I don't, I think I've ne I think this game was the first time I've ever cast Lightning Storm in my entire Striker 2 ever. Uh, so that's interesting, but paying 3 focus for a 3 inch AoE is not very good. But when it can kill a Deathstalker and a Forsaken, it's worth it. So you see my Lancer ran up there, and uh, the Charger right now, he's walking up to within 12 of the Angel, he's going to take a couple Boost it, double boosted shots into the angel and actually end up doing a good bit of damage into the angel. I think he does a total of 12 damage with two shots, which is not bad. And then most other stuff is just going to be running up. The centurion there actually tramples up and then repositions. The sword knights are running to block off that zone. I need to get in the habit of actually running past the zone if possible, but they couldn't run past the zone this time, so that's okay. Um, get at the top there I'm measuring out so I asked him what his threat ranges were and he said that it was uh, 16 on Proteus and 14 on everything else so I told him I was putting striker just over 14 inches from the Scythian um, and I wasn't really concerned about Proteus because I you know wasn't I didn't think Proteus would be able to kill me and Rowdy so Moving everything else up, I did not feat with Striker. You see, I did put down the Lightning Storm and I did rebuke the Scythian so that he can't do a Thrasher attack. Uh, I debated rebuking the Scythian or the Angelius. I probably should have done it to the Angelius, because the power 16 armor pierce is pretty uh, pretty sick. And then as we strike, uh, the Junior there, he ran over onto the hill and I should have put him, I should have put Arcane Shield on the Striker with him, but I did not. And then um, on to my buddy's turn. So you see I moved on my buddy's turn because we realized that I told him I was 14 inches out and I wasn't 14 inches out so he graciously let me move back to just outside the 14. And he's going to go ahead and try to see if he can get me killed. He's planning out his turn right now. He knows he wants Abby to uh, do some slipstreams. Uh, slipstream Proteus, Slipstream the Angelius with the actual Seraph. There with Abby, she's going to go and charge, uh, pop her feet and charge into a Sword Knight to kill two of them. 
uh, proccing Alpha Hunter's secondary ability with a plus two to a couple stat lines. Basically, her whole army is going to have like plus two strength and movement and flight and a bunch of other stuff because of her feet and Alpha Hunter. They charge for free because of Alpha Hunter, so that's pretty sick. Uh, the Ravagor up there, he charged into my Lancer and with three attacks ended up killing the Lancer. Even with the defense 15 on the charge attack, but he actually missed the charge and then just did three regular bot attacks killing the Lancer. Uh, Angelius is going to go ahead, or sorry, the Seraph is going to go ahead and slipstream the Angelius up. And then the Seraph is going to take a couple shots into Striker. Actually missed both of his shots, which is fine by me. He was debating that second shot into Striker or into something else. Decided to go ahead and shoot Striker. But Striker sitting at defense 18 on the hill from gunshots, so that was good. And then, I believe this is where we realize that, oh, the actually the Angelius is also a threat range of 16, not 14. Uh, so the Angelius can get to Striker. But since he had told me that he, it was a 14 inch, not a 16 inch, he went ahead and he just sent the Angelius into a Rowdy instead. Um, turns out a power and strength 16 armor pierce into an armor 11 uh, Rowdy did 18 points of damage. So that happened. Then he did 4 points of damage with his second attack. And then he ended up doing 9 points of damage with uh, his last... Sorry, he hasn't gone that yet. He's measuring out the Proteus. He's trying to see if he can get Proteus without the uh, slipstream into Striker. Uh, and then he goes back to the Angel and finishes off my old Rowdy with his Angel doing 9 points of damage at dice off 3. Which sucks. Um, old Rowdy's retaliatory strike took out the Angel's mind uh, nothing else, so that was bad. I was really hoping to take out a Spirit, that probably would have saved Old Rowdy. Instead, you'll see right there the Proteus walk, uh, charges up to Striker, pulls him in, and kills him. So. That is why there are two battle reports on this video. <laughs> that was a really quick game. Uh, we decided to legitimately just pull our armies back and go ahead and replay that now that I know that his army has such uh, extensive threat ranges and Proteus is a beast. So, we're going to go ahead and go into video number two and I'll be right back. Okay, so uh, on to video number two. Um, we literally reset and we just played the exact same thing. Uh, so. We're already into my first turn here. Everything's up. Everything's running up. Pretty much the exact same. We did the same deployment. Everything was the just a mirror match, and I'm just not going to be an idiot and put Striker within 14 inches of Proteus and an Angelius. Uh, it turns out that's a bad, bad plan. Uh, deflection does go up this time. The Strikers, are, the Death, Death Stalkers, are going to go ahead and kill off a couple uh, Sword Knights. Another Death Stalker is going to go up and kill off a Stormblade. And then be out of range on the other storm blades, so that's good. Spell martyr ran at the top. Spell martyr runs at the bottom. Uh, Forsaken stays in the back, so that I can't take him out with a uh, lightning storm. Angel down there moves up to threaten the zone. Uh, kills off another sword knight. One lonely, lonely sword knight. Probably should have toughed them, but I didn't. I put concealment on the storm blades instead. Uh, Ravagor is going to go ahead and shoot, uh, try to get a good deviation. Uh, it's going to deviate pretty much directly backwards and almost hit his own guy, but not quite. That would have been uh, sweet, sweet justice. Navigors with their 4 inch AoE scaler death. Proteus is going to move up and stay out of 17 inches of Striker again. He was really cautious about Striker's threat range, which is good. I mean, the way I wasn't cautious with his, he is cautious with mine. Uh, you see the Scythian move up there into the forest. I believe it was a Scythian. Yeah. Uh, Abby is going to move up and she puts Bracer on Proteus and then gets face to face with him. And then on to my turn. So, on my turn two, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure out where the Lancer is going to go again. Uh, decide what I want to do with Rebuke. There goes the Proxy Race. Um, trying to get within five inches of the Death Stalker so that I can get through the stealth and get within 10 inches of the Angel so that I can stop that Armor Pierce attack. Seems like a good idea. It would have worked better last time, so why not do it this time? And then after that, the Sword Knights are going to get run orders, and they go ahead and run maximum distance, because I am planning on this being a feat turn. Uh, Runewood is going to walk up 
I'm measuring his command right now. I can't get him into command really of most of the guys, so I just walk him up, give Pathfinder to uh, the storm the Stormblades, who will then get an assault order. Two of them are able to get within five inches of the Death Talk of Deathstalker up there at the top. So they'll take shots and even tens to hit. The first one will actually roll flowers or five five and blow them off the board. So that was good. The rest of them are just ran into position. Uh, the Charger is within 12 inches of Proteus, so he's going to go ahead and take some shots on the Proteus. And unfortunately, dice off 8, I do like 3 points of damage total, which is not unexpected. The uh, Centurion, you see, I put out two proxy bases for him, so he just walked and then repositioned to get close to the Scythian. And then, measuring out some threat ranges here, I run Rowdy to the right. Or to my left, sorry. And then Striker walks up. Unfortunately, um, I totally forget about putting positive charge onto anything, uh, especially my Centurion, which is what I really wanted it on. And instead, I do the Lightning Storm to kill the Deathstalker, and I did the Rebuke to rebuke the Angel, leaving me with one Fury and uh, pop my feet. So everything on the feet turn walks up, and as I move my Centurion, I realize I did not give him positive charge, so he's only hitting at power and strength 20 with Crush. Uh, the Jack Marshall Crush ability. But more importantly, he's not giving the bonus to the Sword Knights either. So the Sword Knights are hitting at map 6 and power strength 10 weapon master. Um, that sucks. Or, sorry, map 8 power and strength 10 weapon master. Uh, because of flank. So end up doing uh, a little bit of damage to the Scythian, but I leave him on like 12 or 14 boxes, which means that I probably could have killed him had I not popped Polarity Field with Arlen Strangeway's uh, focus on the Centurion and used it to boost damage instead um, and got the plus two damage from the Centurion, the Lancer, and the four Sword Knights that are around the Scythian would have equaled enough damage to kill that Scythian, which would have been a big deal. Uh, other than that, everything else just kind of dirtles around and then we go to his turn. So in his turn, he's definitely going to go for uh, Scenario this time. He's looking, he needs to clear, uh, I believe, three or four models out of his zone. And then he can probably get Abby into his zone to dominate it. So what he's looking at doing, popping his feet, using Abby. I'll just let the video play out. So, see right now he's asking a few questions, making sure that he knows um, what everyone can do, where everyone's at. Talking about trying to get the Ravagord to contest the zone up there, or the Spellmar to contest the zone up there. So Abby goes and she pops her feet and charges into a Sword Knight, killing him, proccing Alpha Hunter again. Uh, I believe she buys an attack and kills the second one. Oh, no, she's just going to go ahead and reposition five to get into the zone and out of Striker's threat. And sometime today, oh, he did psychosurgery. Sorry, I forgot he did psychosurgery to heal up all the beasts that took a little point, little couple points of damage. Now he moves into the zone and dominate. He's gonna get ready to dominate that bottom zone there. See the Scythian just cleared away a bunch of sword knights. He actually missed that one there in the middle, which, you know, with Murderous is not likely at all, but he did. Um, did a couple points of damage to the Lancer, and then killed him with his second or third attack, I believe. And then did a couple points of damage extra to the Centurion. I think he did like two or three points to the Centurion after he was done. So Proteus disappeared because he turned into a proxy base, and Proteus is going to go ahead and wail on my Centurion. Fortunately, an Armor 21 Centurion is not trivial to remove, and ends up leaving him with three whole boxes after Proteus is full on Fury. Which is good for me. Proteus will then get slipstreamed out of combat with my uh, Centurion because he was just under two, or just under the. Uh, just within range, not quite base to base with the Centurion. Uh, so the Seraph kills off the last remaining Sword Knight. And Abby's going to be able to dominate that bottom zone for two control points. So the Ravagor kills one of my Storm Blades, and the Spell Martyr moves in to contest that zone. 
while the Forsaken moves up and takes as much fury as she can. But she can't take enough, so there will be some frenzy checks coming on the next turn. Alright, so on to my turn three. Zenturian has his uh, spear arm left, I believe. Or he just has his movement. No, he has just his movement left. His spear arm, both of his arms are out. And his cortex is out, so no Arlen focus for them. But he still manages from the crush order to do 7 points of damage to the Scythian. Not enough to kill it, but enough to get, get him hurting. Stormblades, you'll see them charge in. Two of them charge in on the Ravagor, and with two assault shots and two melee attacks, all hitting and rolling 17 damage total on the dice. At dice off four on the Ravagor, two Stormblades killed the Ravagor, straight up. Both melee attacks did a total of 13 damage each. Plus the assault shots. So that was really cool. Um, then the charger moved up, killed the Spell Martyr, and put a couple more points of damage onto Proteus to clear my zone. I ran, you see Elaine Runewood there, and I ran uh, Arlen to contest his zone. I couldn't get anything else into his zone to contest. I probably should have ran the Piper to contest that zone. Instead, I ran the Piper away. That was a bad mistake on my part. And Striker moves into my zone to contest, or to dominate. So it's two to two. We're all tied up. Scythian actually ended up frenzying onto the Centurion, um, but because he doesn't get boosted damage unless he makes the 3-inch charge, he ends up doing no damage. Dice off 2 and roll to 2. So. The Scythian, or sorry, the Seraph there got his Apparition move, and then Abby will go ahead and she is going to attempt to clear her zone so she can dominate it again. She's trying to figure out a way to clear her zone. She's got to kill an 8 wound model and a 13, 14, 5 wound model. So, not a huge, huge or difficult thing to do with the beast that she has, but he's going to take a lot of time deciding this. You see the spell martyr run up. Abby's going to cast the spell into Roomwood and end up missing, which is great for me, which kills the spell martyr. So, that's one less model I got to worry about. Uh, and then. Angel is going to go ahead, I'm oh, sorry, the uh, Abby is still going here, she, that was just her spells, so now she's going to do her movement, staying outside of 17 inches, and then the Angel there, you see him putting the 2 inch reach range, is going to go and charge into Runewood, or into uh, Strangeways, and end up killing him on the charge. And then my opponent is going to see how he can contest my zone and dominate his zone at the same time. Because he needs to contest my zone, otherwise I just win. He decides to do... You see the Seraph there ends up moving out of the forest here in a second. So that he can see the Centurion. After we discuss this for a second. He's debating taking free strikes with Proteus from the Centurion and a couple of Stormblades. Decides he's going to have to do that. So the Seraph moves in, takes a shot and boosts damage onto Runewood, kills him, and takes a shot into the Centurion, boosts damage, and does not kill him. So Proteus is going to have to take some free strikes. I believe he only takes one free strike, and that's from the Centurion. Which ends up doing like two points of damage. Or one point of damage. Something like that. And then the Forsaken gets to charge in on the Centurion. And with POW 12 charge, kills the Centurion. So, good for him, I guess. Uh, he will contest my zone, dominate his zone, go to four control points. To my two control points. And we're going on to my fourth turn. I... Uh, Measuring out to see just how much stuff that can run its max distance and get into the zone. You see the Piper was just barely out and that was a big mistake on my part. I definitely should have had the Piper closer so he could run in. I didn't even think about it last game, or last turn. That was a big mistake on my part. So you see uh, the Junior ran into the zone on full camp. The uh, Charger ran into the zone. 
The storm blades are going to go ahead and activate, and the room, the um, standard bear and one grunt can run into the zone and just barely touch it. Another one charges into the Forsaken, and two charge into Proteus, with the leader running to keep everyone in command. The two on Proteus, uh, sorry, the one on the Forsaken kills it, the two on Proteus end up doing quite a lot of damage, actually, end up doing like 18, or sorry, did uh, 23 damage to an armor 20 Proteus. And then Rowdy just charges into him and swings one time and wipes him out. Strike will camp up right behind Rowdy on full camp, and I ran the Squire and Piper to get into the zone next turn if that matters. So on to my buddy's turn. He's got to kill legitimately three models, but he can repulse things too. So you see the Seraph goes ahead and apparitions to get closer to my zone. All he's got to do is kill a couple models and then contest my zone and he'll win this game. So He's trying to decide how he can go about doing that. Um, I honestly think he put a little too much thought into this. Uh, he didn't remember that the juniors, once they die, their war jacks go inert and don't protest. So he put some effort into killing or removing the charger that he didn't have to. You see Abby's up there right now and Abby kills off the junior and leaves three focus on herself to do it with. Then spends two to repulse the Stormblade Standard Bear out of the way. And then repositions five to get into the middle of the zone. The Scythian, or sorry, the Angel, will go and repulse the Charger out of the zone. And then all that's left is one lonely, lonely Stormblade that does not have tough. The Scythian will go up and murders will allow him to kill him. The Seraph will fly to contest my zone and it'll be a victory to Legion. So, uh, you got two video reports there. I'm going to call this Battle Report 7 and Battle Report 7.5 because that first game was so pathetic. I will tell you that um, the games I played uh, before this actually turned out a lot better. Um, played a couple games, one against Legion again and one against uh, Retribution, and they were very good. I think Striker 2 was fantastic. He is a strong caster, and he is probably going to make it into my two list pairing, most definitely into my three list pairing. And then uh, we'll hope, see how so see hopefully uh, I can get some better results from him if I uh, focus a little more on that scenario and obviously don't throw my caster within 10, 12, 14 inches of a beast that can charge that way. All right, so all right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the game. I will uh, be back next week with a game. I'm not sure if I'm going to do Striker Two or Legion, um, or sorry, Striker Two or Nemo, or if I'm going to do a Haley Two game. I haven't played Haley Two and Mark Three yet, so it might be interesting to get her on the channel. Um, other than that, have a good night guys, and I'll see you later.